then when it comes to the job opportunities, there are still job opportunities. And like we've said on this show, there are many um, uh, opportunities that are emerging, but it's for those who are both aware of the opportunities and then engaging in them that will be able to benefit from them. My name is Sela Bogonko, co-founder and CEO Jacobs Ladder Africa, and this is Green Jobs Africa. So now that we understand the macro issues that are existing, what exactly are the job opportunities that are there for a young person, especially in Africa? Um, and the reason why I broke down the macro issues is because even in those macro issues, therein lie the opportunities. For example, you could, if you're able to partner with uh, existing firms that are able to set up the charging points. Uh, we do know that this is largely government driven because of the cost of capital that is required. But in the process of setting those up, they will definitely be requiring engineers who understand how to design, you know, architects and engineers that are able to set up those kind of charging points and monitor them or, or maintain them. That's a whole uh, branch or a whole opportunity on its own. The other one is, like I said, should there be an increased value addition on the continent? That's going to be a huge um, uh, employment uh, source for many young people on the continent, but you do have to have the skills for it. The other one could be the maintenance bit of it or even the spare parts. Um, for the most part, one of the other sectors that emerged when there was an increase or an influx in motorbikes in particular in Africa was the spare parts business. And that's one of the areas that even local governments can empower young people to be able to set up shop. Many times we create, say for example, car washes for them, which are great, but then spare parts as platforms or shops that they can be able to run, especially when they get the requisite funding. That could be another huge opportunity to enable young people that are able to maintain uh, the parts as well as supply new parts because we'll need them of course on the continent. The opportunities are endless and they're immense. The other one could just be data. I always go back to that. Um, one of the things I was thinking about yesterday is for example, when it comes to the immobility sector, there could be other value additions. Kenya is known as the Silicon Savannah. Imagine having a helmet as you're driving an e-bike that enables you to pick up the phone without necessarily having to switch off your bike or to stop somewhere or to be able to communicate or you know, integrated with the GIS or GPS system that enables you to know as you're riding what some of the dangers around and some of the things that you need to look out for. We can innovate and we can leapfrog this whole process by thinking ahead and thinking, how do we make it work for us? Because I believe that innovation has to be local. It has to be able to address local challenges and be able to fit in to our system. Speaking of innovation, one of the things we need to remember, for example, is that innovation is local and it has to be relevant to the environment in which it is being applied or being sold. For example, Africa is largely dependent on mobile money. Regardless of the fragmentation and the challenges that are existing, we do depend a lot more on the mobile money, even if we integrate it with our banking system, for example. So for the many people who have accounts, they still run on mobile money. And there are more people that are actually having mobile money um, accounts compared to uh, bank accounts. And, as a, and it's been an amazing transformation when it comes to financial inclusion. That's not the, the case or the reality when it comes to others, other continents. For example, China is not big on mobile money. America is not big on mobile money. So when it comes to innovations, we cannot wait for ideas or concepts that have been adopted in other continents to apply them to Africa. We can be able to customize the solution. And even as we, we go through this green growth transition, as we go through this process of getting into green jobs and all that, we have to be able to think what would work for our people? What would work for that uh, woman who's selling uh, vegetables and needs to be able to tap into the green growth opportunity, for example, in the climate smart agriculture uh, sector? What would, what would work for that young person who doesn't have access to finance but can be able to, is part of probably a cooperative or a circle and be, can be able to get a product that is relevant to him for him to be able to participate in this green growth uh, context or green growth um, opportunity that is available for us as a continent. There are many ways to look at it and the, in the e-mobility sector it's still an emerging sector but this is our opportunity to redefine what works for us. One of the other ways we need to look at it, for example, is a lot of the products or a lot of the cars and the bikes that are created are not necessarily created for this market. And when they are, they're not necessarily agile enough to be able to be uh, customized or made more relevant for us. 
But we have an opportunity, especially in the immobility space, to define and redefine what works for us as a people. And that means that it's an opportunity for young people, especially in the tech space, to begin to look at what would work. How do we leverage AI, for example? How do we leverage blockchain technology? How do we leverage all this new technology that's coming up for us to be able to benefit even as we design our own solutions when it comes to immobility? And one of the things I recently learned is that immobility is not just... Uh, um, restricted for example to the bikes and to the vehicles it's not restricted to the trains or to the to the boats it's also it could entail for example some form of drones there are drones now in Rwanda that are that have been in the last couple of years dropping medicine specifically to people instead of waiting for a bike to take you know from one city to the other you can be able to send a drone to drop the medicine or the package that is required in a rural or remote area these are some of the opportunities that are there again and um, the challenges that we have especially before we create the roads or before we we build the roads and the bridges we can leverage on technology to address our own unique challenges as a continent. The list is endless and we could go on and on, but the opportunities are immense. And as I've always said on this platform, our job is probably to uh, trigger you and to let you know that there are things that are happening out there and there are things that you can do as a young person, whether you are in campus or in high school or just finished or have graduated and have nothing to do and you're wondering, what do I do with my life? You don't have to wait for that job. You can begin researching, thinking. In this age of information, it's available for you. Someone else is doing the hard work to bring all this information to you so that you can have an easier time when it comes to creating the solutions. There are many opportunities out there. There are many funds that are being um, uh, put out there for climate tech solutions in the e-mobility space, in the energy space, in the agricultural space. Your job is just to make yourself have some form of value that you bring to the table. And I hope that in the immobility space, we could see a lot more young people, especially addressing the issue of whether it's the, the bike riders or the immobility or any other space that you can see as a value addition that you can bring to the table or use to take advantage of this opportunity. Again, it's an area that, um, uh, that I think that many of the Africans can be able to participate and change the trajectory of having to depend and wait for second hand uh, or vehicles that are designed for our, our roads and designed for our environment and begin to determine what works for us as a people because we can do it. I hope you've learned one thing or two that has helped, that would be able to help you know exactly how to position yourself or what career to choose or how to transition into a different career uh, based on the information that we've shared with you. And there's a lot more out there today. We were just hoping to give you a little bit of what's happening so that you can be able to get some form of or generate some form of interest in the e-mobility space. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for your feedback. And thank you for the encouragement. It's been an amazing uh, season as we get to hear a lot more um, young people expressing from different parts of the continent, expressing their views and giving their contributions and even sharing their opinions. It's been amazing and we um, absolutely are grateful for it. Should you have questions or comments or anything that you want to share with us or even just ideas that you want someone else to think through with you, uh, we're happy to point you in the right direction or to help you uh, think through the ideas so that you can be able to move from an idea to an actual um, substantive product or solution or service. My name is Salah Bogonko, co-founder and CEO of Jacob's Ladder Africa, and this is Green Jobs Africa.